Cleveland Farrell may have been the first surprise yesterday in Nashville, but the biggest surprise was Daniel Jones heading to the Giants at sixth overall. With other big name quarterbacks like Dwayne Haskins still on the board, the Giants went with the Duke signal caller, shocking their fans. General Manager Dave Gettleman defended their choice, saying Jones is the future franchise QB for the g man I tell you what it was. I loved him on film. Absolutely loved him. Loved everything about him. And uh, then I went to the uh, Senior Bowl and uh, watched him that week, and I, I, I had decided to stay for the game. He walked out there, and I saw a professional quarterback after, his, after the three series that I watched. I saw a professional quarterback. So that's when I was in full bloom love. It's funny because if you look at Pat Shermer, he doesn't seem as convinced. So why don't we break this all down? Patrick Leonard is here with us. And uh, Patrick, I, I read your piece in the New York Daily News this morning, and it brought me great delight uh, that, that you took the Giants out to the woodshed for what you called a mocked draft, a draft mocked. Why did you feel that way? Well, Lawrence, frankly, I feel like the Giants reached incredibly high for a need. And Dave Gettleman's M.O. is to take the best player available. And really, he's indicting himself in last year's draft and passing on Sam Darnold by pay taking Daniel Jones, a player that a lot of people had mid-first round at best this high. Uh, he's basically putting Eli Manning on the clock. He's taking a player who he could have gotten at number 17. I talked to some teams around the league. A couple teams, uh, you know, I asked them what about what Gettleman said. If they had Josh Allen, the Kentucky edge rusher, who was still on the board, and Daniel Jones graded similarly, and at least one of my sources, frankly, chuckled. Uh, Josh Allen was a lot of teams' top player on the board there. Edge rusher was a huge need. Um, and even though it made sense for the Giants to go get a quarterback here, they bring Eli Manning back, but they don't give him a player to help him win at number six when there are a lot of guys on the board who could have helped their defense. I heard that the reaction at the Giants fan party was not great for Daniel Jones. And look, fans are not always right about things like this, but I would imagine this is not what Giants fans were expecting at all. Not at all, Lawrence. You're right. There, there were boos at MetLife Stadium at a draft watch party, uh, at the watch party inside the stadium, outside on the field. Uh, I ran a quick poll right after the pick, said, do you love it or hate it? 1,500 people responded. 85% said they hated the pick. Uh, frankly, Dwayne Haskins is a much better player. I mean, as many people as you can talk to in the pre-draft process, Haskins is a better player. Um, and if not, why not get Josh Rosen? You know, apparently the Cardinals were holding out for a first-round pick. But I find it hard to believe they wouldn't have done it for number 37 in the second round. Gettleman's biggest problem in most of these drafts and most of these moves is his misunderstanding or his ignorance of value. Taking a running back over a quarterback and not making calls when he was on the clock at two last year, signing Odell Beckham Jr. and giving him $21.5 million and then trading him, letting Landon Collins walk out the door for nothing, and now making this decision on Daniel Jones. All of them are head scratchers, and he's really just compounding mistakes. And it's interesting at least the pro Eli Manning fan base was standing behind Dave Gettleman and the Giants. But after this call by Gettleman, now the E-Hive, as Mark Ross uh, coined it, is going to turn on Gettleman too. So it's hard to know what, um, what allies he will have remaining after this. I thought it was really interesting. Like his approach to trying to sell Jones was, uh, I fell in love with him. I mean, that guy looked like a quarterback. And they, they've done this before with the Senior Bowl quarterback. I, I'm a little surprised that he thought that that was the right way to sell Daniel Jones to everybody. Right, and it, he was really worrisome. And Pat Shermer tried to walk this back a little bit. Gettleman basically said that he watched him play for three series in the Senior Bowl, and he was convinced, and he fell in love with him. And so Pat Shermer said, listen, guys, I was a little bit more deliberate than that. <laughs> so everyone's saying, uh, okay, good, somebody in the building. Um, but it really, uh, frankly, I, I am, I guess Shermer's not the GM, right? So he doesn't make the pick. He only recommends the QB. So he could like Daniel Jones, but still not have wanted him at 17 necessarily. But this goes all the way up to the top, Lawrence, frankly. Uh, this goes up to ownership and the hiring of Gettleman. Think of it this way. If they had hired Lewis Riddick as their GM, 
it's not crazy to say that right now they would have had Sam Darnold, Odell Beckham Jr., and Josh Allen, the edge rusher, out of Kentucky. Instead, they have Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, who's a great player, and a defensive tackle in Dexter Lawrence, who's good. But so far, the return on the Odell Beckham trade is a defensive tackle, an offensive lineman, and a late third-round pick. So what does this mean for Eli Manning? Is there a chance that he loses his job to Daniel Jones this year? Well, that's, that's a great question because, on the one hand, this makes Eli a lame duck in the sense that five quarterbacks go in the first round last year and all of them end up starting at least one game for their team. So history shows Daniel Jones gets on the field this year. On the other hand, they may have taken the one quarterback who – he, I don't I don't want to trash him too badly. He's a nice kid. He's hardworking. He's athletic. Uh, you know, I wish him the best. Uh, but Eli Manning, you know, might not be threatened by him. Daniel Jones might not be good enough to breathe down his neck immediately, even if things go poorly. So that's the concern here. Obviously, if you believe in a quarterback, you go and get him. But if you go and get the wrong one, that's the thing here. If Gettleman got the right guy, everyone in New York and New Jersey will love him. If he got the wrong guy... This is going to cost him his job. It's also like the connection with Cutcliffe is, you know, I, I get it that you were the, the guy with the Mannings, but then if you look at the rest of the quarterbacks that Cutcliffe, Cutcliffe has gotten close or to the NFL, it's, it's not really great. Right, and the, this is the Giants' issue and the frustration is that they do what's comfortable. And back in January, you look at Daniel Jones and you see all the connections to the Mannings, and honestly, a lot of us just penciled them in as a giant right then and there. Hmm. But then you do your homework. Then you talk to people. Then you say to people, who, you know, how do you rank these QBs? Then you watch some of their tape. Then you find out, you know, were they accurate? Are they inaccurate? You watch their combine. You see their pro days. You listen to people talk about interviewing them. And you say to yourself, maybe Daniel Jones, but definitely not high in the first round because that's just not how he grades out, especially for a team that lacks in depth at several positions and – is bringing back Eli Manning, meaning if you're going to ask Eli to win, you got to go and get him players to help do it. So this is the whole idea of the fact when someone like me says, what is their plan? They're doing a little bit of both. And where that lands you, Lawrence, is in purgatory.